At number 10, we have Weapon X Wolverine. First appearing in X-Men Alpha number one, this version of Wolverine is missing one hand and fights in a Magneto-led version of the X-Men. It's hard to imagine Logan being even more grizzled than we're used to, but with face paint and a ton of built-up resentment about the whole missing hand situation, this version of the hero shows what age can do to a person, especially when you're creeping towards the ripe age of 300. Known as Weapon X in this future reality, this Wolverine soon becomes known as Weapon Omega, and to be fair, his anger isn't the only thing driving him to be more vicious than ever. This version of Wolverine is augmented by the Celestials and can only eventually be stopped by Jean Grey. At number 9, we have Counter Earth Hawkeye. This could be contested whether or not he's from the future or just an alternate reality, but Time is kind of hard to follow sometimes when dealing with interdimensional travel, so I'll leave this one up for debate. Regardless, it's a pretty unique version of Wolverine that I thought was worth mentioning. Franklin Richards writes a new version of Hawkeye in Onslaught Reborn number one, who appears to be a different iteration than the one we're used to. And that's because behind the mask is actually Wolverine and not Clint Barton. On Counter Earth, this version of Wolverine is part of the Avengers and it seems to me that this alternate dimension is further along in its own timeline allowing for Wolverine to possess some kind of magical ability brought on by Blastar the Living Bomb Burst. At number 8 is Phalanx Wolverine from the newer comic series X Deaths of Wolverine, released between January and March of 2022. This version of Wolverine travels into the future to save a being who is very, very important to the mutant race. And as he travels through time, he starts to envision memories from his past. Memories that he hadn't ever before been able to recall. One of the more significant of these lost memories is one where he was present during the birth of Charles Xavier, saving his family from Omega Red. This storyline uses a future version of Wolverine to remind us that this hero, being the most published in the history of Marvel Comics, has so much history that there is still new lore to be uncovered, even in 2022. Number seven. Captain Logan. Coming from the noir series, Earth 90214, Jim Logan was a detective, much like our 616 Logan, his past was also troubled. His partner was his half-brother named Dog Logan, who has the brains of a bedbug and the manners of a gutter rat. And that's in his words, not mine. His origins are a little bit messy when it comes to the noir verse, because in X-Men Noir, Mark of Cain, Wolverine's origins are that of a bootlegger whose past is never really touched on. All we know is that he's a former lover of Jean Grey and that he was the one who took out Scott Summers' left eye. But here in Wolverine Noir, he's a detective with a gritty Catholic past. Either way, the noir versions of Wolverine is quite dark, and although his claws aren't built in this time around, he still has them as a weapon of choice. Real Freddy Krueger style, I like it. Number six, Weapon X. One of the more extreme versions of Wolverine, Weapon X came from the Age of Apocalypse storyline, and the first time we meet him is in X-Men Alpha issue one. Weapon X was a member of the X-Men, only this time around Magneto is running the team. How lovely is that? He's great. One of the most notable differences between this Logan and others is that Weapon X is missing a hand. He had battled Cyclops, and although he lost it in the fight, Logan can still use claws on that arm. Now in this reality, Wolverine, sorry, Weapon X, was married to Jean Grey. So a little light in this warped reality. Love still exists out there, it's true. He later on became Weapon Omega, AKA the hair to apocalypse. So it's really not that great. There's love, but there's also evil stuff. Number five, Zombie Wolverine. We're just a day out from another episode of What If on Disney Plus and we're all so excited and I'll be honest, a little bit nervous because those zombie Avengers are still super powered and they're still on the way. Zombie Wolverine first appeared in Ultimate Fantastic Four issue 22. Now at the Xavier Institute, Wolverine and the X-Men were taken on a zombified Alpha Flight when Magneto came in to save the day. He was part of the crew that went to fight off the remaining horde, but I did introduce him as Zombie Wolverine, so yes, he was sadly infected. Wolverine was bitten by Zombie Hawkeye and Zombie Cap, and after he turned into one himself, he defeated and then ate the Silver Surfer. An afternoon snack quickly gave Wolverine cosmic powers, quite the upgrade. It's a gory good time. If we had X-Men in the MCU right now, the zombie episodes would have been so much better, but we can't complain, it's still good stuff. Wolverine is a main character in the Marvel Zombies Dead Days and a minor antagonist in Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness. If you haven't read either, I recommend you read both of them. Read all the zombie comics. I shouldn't have to sell you on how cool zombie superhero comics are. You know? Number four, Mr. Murder Hands. There's a nickname, a rather fitting one, really. 
Logan from Earth 65 first appeared in Spider Gwen Volume 2, Issue 20. He was a former Japanese samurai who was cursed by a witch. The curse was that you have to live on Earth for all the days that his targets, the people that he killed, would have. So he's going to see quite a few days, basically. His memory here is also erased, and it happens right after he joins the Weapon X program, where he's also given his trademark adamantium claws. When he later joins S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Black Ops team, his fellow operatives give him the nickname of Mr. Murderhands. Nice. Oh, this is your teammate, Edward Murderhands. Yeah, make sure you sign in. Great. Break a like, team. Number three, Primal Wolverine. A side we don't get to see too often is Logan's animalistic side. Although maybe it's for the best, we don't want to see that. We don't want any of that smoke, really. Coming from the Mutant Next series back in 1998, we pick up with Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Wildchild, but this time around they're referred to as the Pack. Now in this story, Logan still goes crazy after Weapon X does their thing, but this time he's not alone. Sabretooth and Wildchild also endure these crazy experiments, each of them also going primal in the end. Now the three of them end up roaming the Canadian wilderness like an actual pack. But this pack is one you want to avoid. They end up going nuts by the end of the comic, like I said, but while they're in the wild, they did see other mutants and in turn they all work together for a hot moment to figure out what was happening in Weapon X. They have the right idea, but those animalistic impulses are just too powerful. Messy. Number two, Old Man Logan. Mark Miller's Old Man Logan begins in volume three of Wolverine on issue 66. And this is a future where supervillains have sadly one for the most part. Hulk and She-Hulk had kids, the Hulklings, who would beat the crap out of you if you didn't pay rent. So yeah, it's an odd future to say the least. Everybody has their own territory, so Logan now has to pay up for living in his. Hawkeye, who was much older and this time around he was blind, needed Logan's assistance to get across the country and deliver a secret package. This was a way Logan could get some of that rent money, so let's do it. Just talking about Logan paying rent money is a weird thing. When they get back from their trip, things have changed drastically. Now Hulk gang actually took out Logan's family because, you know, they were bored. And that's what people do when they're bored in this dark future. No more games, no more talking. Now it's time for Logan just to get payback. Simple as that. Alternate reality, same temper. Logan gets Banner, he gets him right through the chest, so naturally he hulks out. And then when Hulk eats Logan, you think that would for sure be the end of it, but that's when Logan pops out from inside Banner. Surprise, we're gonna throw up. And finally, number one, Old Man Venom. Coming from Edge of Venomverse, issue four, we see Logan get captured by Angel, who is Archangel in disguise, and Hulk Jr. This story played out differently than the Old Man Logan storyline because this Wolverine told Bruce Banner Jr. what happened to his father. Archangel took Logan to the danger room of the X-Mansion and that's where he and Bruce Jr. just ambushed him. Wasn't very happy this time around, although the first one wasn't really happy in any way, I guess, either. Bruce Jr. had this idea that maybe if he kills Logan, he can then use his DNA and create symbiote hybrid clones, but what ended up happening was Logan fought a Venomsaurus Rex. That same T-Rex from the original Old Man Logan storyline. The same one we see chasing Hawkeye and Logan. So he fought it, got eaten by it, and then considering the fact that Logan was eaten by the Hulk and ripped his way out, we already know that this is going to be much better. He comes out better than ever. The symbiote ends up bonding with Logan in the T-Rex tummy, giving us a pretty exciting extreme upgrade. He rips his way through the dinosaur and subsequently rips his way through his enemies. Number 10, Howlet. Howlet is another one of my favorite Wolverine alternates. He hails from Earth 120. 025, known for being his own home universe. That's how popular he is. That's how we know what that universe is, just based on this one character. He was created by Greg Pak and Mike McCone, and made his first appearance in 2004's Astonishing X-Men in issue number 44. In this reality, James Howlett becomes the Governor General of Canada, serving both the Queen of England and Canada. He often teams up with the Hercules of this reality, and the two even have a romantic relationship together. Tragically, their romance initially had to be kept a secret, because both of the people they served served, the Queen and Zeus in Hercules case, banned them from being in a relationship together, each for their own different reasons. And even when they did reveal their love, there was hell to pay. In a nine old man Logan. 50 years later, Logan lives with his wife Maureen, his son Scotty, and his daughter Jade on a plot of land in Sacramento of what used to be California, but is now a part of Hulkland, and no, that's not an amusement park. He requires money to pay his rent to his landlords for his territory, uh, his landlords being the descendants of Bruce Banner, you know, the Hulk gang, who are the product of just a messed up procreation situation. I don't think I can say the actual words on YouTube, but you get what I'm saying. He refuses to sell his children's toys to pay for rent, so Logan is shown 
as just, you know, a broken man who refuses to fight, even though, you know, he definitely could. Um, and he's just, he's living peacefully, uh, but then when he realizes he's unable to pay, uh, that's when the Hulk gang will not accept a plea deal, um, to pay double next month. Um, so yeah, considering how they're, um, uh, inappropriately and without permissionly conceived children of Hulk and She-Hulk, which is Bruce's cousin, you know that this isn't going to go well. Uh, they confront him on his lack of payment, violently beat him, and then just... Oh, God. It's such a messed up story. Uh, Logan entertains visions of um, gutting the eldest Hulk brother, Otis, um, uh, as he takes the beating, but yeah, the the Hulk gang later kills his family, um, so Logan kills all the Hulk gang. Uh, it's a messed up version, but uh, pretty iconic, but still, yikes. What the hell, Marvel? God, don't don't put this in the MCU. Thank God this wasn't a what if episode. Jeez. Number eight, 1602. King James is the alternate version of Wolverine that exists in the 1602 reality. Or rather, the 1602 reality as it exists in God Emperor Doom's Battle World, which appeared during the 2015 Secret Wars event. This version of Wolverine also has claws like his comic book counterpart, but is a villain instead of a hero. He is one of the witch breed that Sarah and Angela hunt down, with Charles Javier taking over for James after he is defeated. At number seven, we have Logan from Earth 1051. One, 1,000, 10,511. Another iteration of Weapon X, this version of Wolverine appears in Wolverine Weapon X issue number 12 for just a brief moment. But in the short time that he appears, we get a glimpse into a whole new world where Wolverine has lost both his hands, replacing one of them with a hook. During a major battle in a distant future, he comes in to support his team with a big black beard and overgrown hair and a costume that is seems entirely upgraded. He's got metal shoulder and chest pads with a utility belt and he seems like, well, seems like he's been through a lot. He fights against Roxxon to take back the government but is eventually, spoiler alert, killed by Deathlock. At number 6 we have James Howlett from Earth 96099. Only appearing very briefly, this future version of the hero is totally missing his arm after his battles with the Hulks, which seems like a theme, this whole no arm thing. But anyway, this time he's also totally bald as well. He decides to recruit a new X-Men team with a new race of mutants that he encounters in his future timeline. His goal is to rebuild Baltimore of all places after it is destroyed along with much of civilization after a major war, but he also has to protect the world from an army of mindless hulks who continue to act as the main threat in this storyline. At number 5 we have the Wolverine from Wolverine The End. This comic series is known to offer the reader a look into how these characters face, well, their ends. And in Wolverine's issues, we face what seems to be an even older and more grim version of an old man Logan. But for Wolverine, we're left with a cliffhanger instead of his death, suggesting that there will be even more future iterations of Logan and or James Howlett to come. In the final issue of this The End series, James faces off against his own older brother, John Howlett Jr. And as they duke it out in front of an audience of military personnel, James ends up accidentally killing his brother, driving his claws through his chest after a fall. After some epic final words are exchanged, we watch James sit in silence as it's suggested that he is apprehended by the authorities. But this isn't confirmed, that's actually where the series ends. This is definitely one of the more gothic and darker versions of Wolverine, and the dark epic storyline that this series explores really reflects how much Wolverine has been through over the years, even into the future. At number four, we have Ultimate Cable. We all know that Cable is a time traveler and the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, on Earth 2107, this isn't the case. Instead, James Howlett takes on the mantle of Cable and sports a big scar across his face. This is from a battle taking place in the future where this Wolverine version of Cable or vice versa, fights Apocalypse with the X-Men and his arm is once again ripped off. When Apocalypse absorbs his healing factor, he uses the severed arm with the claws on it against Cable Wolverine and leaves a massive scar on the face. And since this and the dismemberment come after his healing power is taken away, these wounds remain. Luckily, this version of Wolverine has other abilities like Cable's and eventually finds a way to travel back in time 30 years to collect Professor Professor X and try and right the wrongs of the future. At number three is Old Man Phoenix. 
First appearing in Marvel Legacy number one, this version of Wolverine is, as you could imagine by the name, Old Man Logan possessing the Phoenix Force. Hailing from Earth 14412, this version of Logan basically mirrors that of 616 Logan up until King Loki wipes out humankind. Logan is known to be dead under unknown circumstances, but is soon chosen to become the new host for the Phoenix Force and travels the universe destroying celestial bodies on his way. When he eventually encounters a future version of Loki, he goes back in time to undo the damage that Loki had done letting go of the Phoenix Force in the process. And this is a request by Loki himself, after seeing something that changes his intentions for supreme power on a dime. This version of Wolverine is definitely the most powerful on the list, both in influence and sheer power. And he looks pretty badass as well, like an old angry wizard, fire wizard. At number two, we have Old Man Logan. Just good old Old Man Logan. Everyone knows this one. I wanted to put him higher on the list than his Phoenix Force counterpart because even though the previous entry is more powerful, Old Man Logan is just more iconic. Old Man Logan first appears in Fantastic Four number 558, but is most well known for his own self-titled series. In this future, Logan has a family, but is in constant fear for his life as most of the world is ruled by supervillains. Most superheroes are dead this far into the future and with his family on the line, he becomes a driven father and husband, packing a punch even more powerful now that it's driven by love and the fear that comes with it. After he raises enough money to protect his family from the Hulk gang, which is a thing in the future I guess, the gang kills his family anyway, leaving old man Logan with only one choice to kill the original Hulk then and there. He is then integrated into the mainstream Marvel Universe after the events of Secret Wars. At number one, we have the Days of Future Past Wolverine, or Wolverine from Earth 811. On Earth 811, this version of Wolverine lives in a time 33 years ahead of the modern 616 version. And when the Watcher from Earth 9997 looks into Logan's past, he unveils that Logan's past isn't quite as it seemed. Instead of being born sometime in the 1800s and tested on in a lab, X-51 finds that he had actually descended from a tribe of humans known as the Moon People. In this future storyline, he's faced with the task of protecting the mutant race after the Mutant Control Act is put into effect and Sentinels are ordered as the protectors of America. After a few search and rescue missions, Wolverine joins the resistance and fights with his mutant comrades, including Magneto, to defeat the Sentinels. In this reality, Wolverine has all the same powers as the 616 version, but he does have access to the Watcher's transportation devices as well on Earth's moon, which could transport him anywhere on Earth instantly. Number 10, Wolverine Earth X. No, not necessarily a dark Wolverine when it comes to tone. This Wolverine is dark because he's just kind of sad. Hailing from Earth 9997, this iteration of Logan has a pretty much identical backstory to that of his 616 counterpart, with the only difference being that Logan's ancestors were a group of pre-humans known as the Moon Clan. This means that instead of being a mutant, he is considered a pure breed human, and all of his powers are a part of his natural biology and not because of any mutations. Fast forward a couple of centuries and we see Logan get adopted by the Howlett family after their child dies, and they just kind of stumble upon him in the wild. The rest of his history seems to be the same though. Wondering why I'm saying this is a bit of a sadder Wolverine? Well, it's because he gets pretty lazy later on in his life after he finally marries Jean Grey and has kids. He lets himself go a little bit and grows a pretty impressive beer gun, and he and Jean turn into the cliche bickering married couple. Later in the story when the Skrull attacks New York, Wolverine refuses to aid Captain America and the other heroes in fighting, and Jean is so upset with the decision and the man that he's become that she leaves Logan and never really looks back. Check out this storyline for yourself starting with 1999's Earth X, number zero. Number 9, Dark Claw. One of the coolest looking hero mashups to come out of the Amalgam universe, in my opinion, is the hero known as Dark Claw, the combination of Batman and Wolverine named Logan Wayne. With a similar backstory to Batman, Wayne witnessed his parents murder at a young age and was then sent off to live with his uncle in Alberta. However, that didn't last very long either because his uncle was murdered as well, and Wayne was sent to live in a home run by nuns. When he was finally old enough, he left them and enlisted in the Royal Canadian Air Force alongside a man named Creed H. Quinn, and the two of them were submitted to the Weapon X Pro. Program, aka the Canadian Super Soldier Program. 
It was there that the Wolverine half of this hero came to be, as it was here he had learned of his meta mutant powers and had his bones fused with adamantium. Quint, however, was not so lucky because through the course of the experiments, he grew more and more insane and would eventually become the Hyena, a combination of Sabretooth and the Joker and Dark Claw's greatest enemy. Equipped with all the powers of Wolverine and the vast knowledge of Batman, Dark Claw is truly an awesome character, so check him out for yourself in his first appearance in 1996's Marvel vs. DC. Number three. Number eight, Wolverine the End. Well, this is a old man Logan, we're not talking about the old man Logan just yet. Logan of Earth 4011, again, shared the same life as the 616 counterpart with a few differences here and there. One of the most prominent being that his brother John Howlett Jr. didn't actually die and was instead taken by the first Weapon X program because John also seemed to possess a healing factor and bone claws. However, he did eventually escape. Logan, however, was not so lucky. He was captured by the new Weapon X program a few years later and had his skeleton fused with adamantium. And from there, the rest of his history is pretty much similar to his mainstream counterpart. You know, joins the X-Men, has a bunch of kids, you know, the whole deal. Fast forward to the end of the 21st century and we get a glimpse of what it would be like if Logan didn't really have to fight anymore and just had the opportunity to grow old and sell animal pelts in Canada. Even though he aged really slowly, you can really see that time is catching up with him. He's not as fast as he used to be, one of his claws is broken, he's developed arthritis, he's just overall doubting his abilities and knows that even though he has a healing factor, he's gonna die pretty soon. Fast forward past Victor Creed's funeral and we see Logan travel to Japan and discover that the white ghost is none other than his brother John, and the two battle it out with John dying in Logan's arms. Give this story a read for yourself starting with Wolverine, the end, number one. In its seven ultimate Wolverine. In this reality, Wolverine suffers from amnesia, and as a result, well, there's little known about his early life, but what is known is both suspect and unverifiable. Uh, it is believed that at one point, Wolverine had a wife and child, but they were supposedly killed by Sabretooth. As both Wolverine and Sabretooth's memories have been tampered with in this past timeline, it, it, this claim is suspect. However, if both of their memories were altered, maybe it does have some validity. Wolverine did own a wedding ring that serves as his only link to his past, uh, not the game. That's a whole other thing. That's a that's a different channel. Uh, but this version of Wolverine has the healing factor, disease resistance, toxin resistance. That damn, I wish I had two years ago. Um, <laughs> extended longevity, superhuman senses, the stamina. The ladies love him because of that too. He has that agility, the reflexes, the classic adamantium laced skeleton and retractable claws. He's experienced in hand to hand combat. Um, he's an expert assassin. He can lift 800 pounds. Like, bro, come on, can you even lift? Spider-Man lifts twice that when he's taking it easy, okay? And that's not even in the symbiote suit, which I guess technically doesn't count and doesn't exactly exist. Um, but you know what, L let's ignore that. He's still cool. Number six, The Punisher. In the What If Wolverine One Shot issue number one from 2005, here we get to imagine what the world might have been like had Wolverine become Punisher instead of Frank Castle. The story is set a bit in the past and imagines what it would be like if Logan had lost his family and sought revenge. In this version of the tale, Wolverine goes up against Scarface, who has Logan's family killed. His wife in this universe is Silver Fox, and together the two had a son. Scarface also might be a character that you'll actually recognize from the main. Marvel Universe here. He's an alternate version of Logan's half-brother, Dog, who you may know from the Wolverine origin story and comic series. Halfway through into number five, Wild Thing. On Earth 982, Rena was the new girl at a high school where some of the more popular girls tried to make her life miserable because, you know, it's high school. Stating that she was the daughter of an immigrant and an unemployed biker, but um, her father is Logan you know, Wolverine. So he picked her up from school on his bike uh, and opinions changed about her, cause you know, yeah. Especially when they learned that her mother Electra was a wealthy martial arts expert. Ah, uh, gotta love high school. However, life at high school wasn't just about dealing with the crowd, uh, because as Wild Thing, Rena had to save a classmate from a high speed kidnapper, defeat a computerized assassin, stop a demonic invader, and even fight one of her teachers when he was turned into a prime sentinel. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> That's just high school. Ah, uh, another sky high reference for those that are keeping track. Rena first appeared in J2 number 5 in 1998 and was created by Ron Lim and Tom DeFalco, even if technically she was created by Logan and Elektra, if you get the joke. Number four, Albert. 
I love Albert. He is the android alternate of Wolverine who was designed by Donald Pierce. Remember him? I remember him. Pierce created Albert along with LCD as part of a plan to trap Wolverine and have him destroyed. Fortunately for Wolverine, LCD was given the wrong level of sort of a logic machine in her mind and managed to find a way around her and Albert being used as such, ultimately freeing Albert and LCD in the end of their obligation to kill Logan. Albert was given his name by LCD after Albert Einstein, who she compared his intelligence to after she severely upgraded him all by herself. Getting close to the end of number three, Wolverine Pool. Wade Wilson from Earth TRN 1946 was bonded with adamantium through his skeleton by the Weapons Plus program. He was later recruited by Deadpool or Dreadpool for his army, uh, and he killed Deadpool Pulp before the arrival of Galactipool. I wish that this was a joke. He was attacked by Deadpool with a grenade from which bugs and uh, other like it, it's it ate all of his flesh, leaving behind only his skeleton and his claws, um, which was seemingly the same as Earth 616's Wolverine's skeleton and claws. But like it's it's a Deadpool. It's Deadpool in Wolverine's body. Uh, that also has the same scarring that regular Deadpool has. Wolverine Pool's healing factor is most likely weaker than 616 Wolverine or Deadpool's healing factor, uh, which makes him less dangerous, but come on, okay? A combination of Wolverine and Deadpool is something that we should all fear and most likely do, um, but I'm surprised Deadpool didn't make this a thing at the end of Deadpool 2 when he was correcting everything that he had done wrong. He should have done this. That would have been funny. Number two, Talon. Laura Kinney is obviously one of my favorite versions of the Wolverine character, and she herself has also technically been Wolverine. Initially known as X-23, Laura was actually created to be a clone of Logan. Her mother, Sarah Kinney, initially tried to create a clone of Logan, but was unsuccessful due to the Y chromosome being damaged. Instead, she attempted to compensate for this by using some of her own genetic material to supplement the parts of the genetic sequence that were basically damaged and missing, creating a female clone instead. It worked, but her work was damaged by her rival, Dr. Xander Rice, forcing Sarah to become a surrogate for the clone if she wanted to save her work. Sarah did just that and X-23 was born. For years, X-23 was raised to be only a weapon, but eventually, after the members of the program turned on each other, she was able to secure her freedom. Unfortunately, along with her freedom came loss. Loss of her purpose in the world and loss of the few people involved in the program who had genuinely cared for her, including her mother, Sarah, who named Laura with her last dying breath. Later, Laura would go on to track down Wolverine and attempt to kill him, seeing herself and her genetic father as nothing more than deadly and dangerous weapons. However, through meeting Logan, X-23 also found a sense of family, and eventually would even come to join the X-Men team. And I mean, spoiler alert, she doesn't end up killing Wolverine, in case you didn't know. Currently, she goes by the code name of Talon. And finally, in a number one, Dark Claw. Logan Wayne is obviously a combination of Bruce Wayne and Logan, being first introduced in Marvel vs. DC number three. At five years old, after witnessing his parents' death at the hands of an armed robber, Logan Wayne was sent to live with his uncle in Alberta, Canada. I'm sorry, dude, Alberta sucks. His uncle was a member of the RCMP, or the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, for those of you who use the Imperial system, and was ambushed and killed by poachers a short time after Logan's arrival. After after the death of his uncle, Logan was sent to live in a home run by nuns, and as soon as he was old enough, he enlisted in the RCAF, the Royal Canadian Air Force. I don't know if they have an acronym, but it just felt right. Logan was submitted to the Weapon X Project, uh, which was a Canadian super soldier program, and then from there, it's it's kind of the same thing. His bones were bonded to adamantium, and he discovered that he was a meta mutant, which is just the meta mutants in this dimension, but y yeah. For it's Batman and Wolverine, okay? He has all the powers of, of Logan and a claw copter and claw mobile. It, that's awesome. I want this in the MCU. If they're fixing the, the DCEU so that we can do this, that would be great. Number 10, Gwen Vereen. Gwen Vereen is an alternate version we've really only seen briefly in Secret Wars Battle World issue number three, but I like to imagine that she is pretty strong and also pretty cool, like many of her other amalgamated versions. Gwen is a character that we've seen become an alternate version of Spider-Man and Deadpool, and both of those characters and versions of Gwen Stacy are pretty rad, I must admit. So I imagine her Wolverine version would also be tough as nails and fierce. Gwen Vereen also appeared on an alternate cover for Old Man Logan issue number two from 2015. 
2015, with art done by Chris Samney. If that art is any indication, like her other alternate versions before her, this would probably prove to be a pretty powerful and popular alternate version of Wolverine and Gwen. If you know, we saw more stuff from her. I just want to read a comic that's about all the awesome and powerful alternate Gwen versions running around in the multiverse together. Gwen Stacy's Adventure Through the Multiverse, it could be called, and Gwen could wander around and meet all the alternate, possibly mutant, versions of herself. Maybe they're all secretly mutants. That would be kind of cool. Just like how Deadpool or Gwenpool was secretly a mutant, maybe, or retconned herself to be a mutant. I love that. It's so weird. Number nine, Poison Wolverine. Poison Wolverine is the assimilated version of Wolverine from Earth 22186, who became bonded to a poison. Poisons are basically like symbiotes, except symbiotes are kind of their own thing over at Marvel, so. I guess imagine a symbiote, but it's like a different symbiotic alien race. So not a symbiote. And and kind of pointy and sharpy instead. Are you with me at all? The poison that bonded to Wolverine and took him over would have his powers and would also be able to use his biomass to shapeshift and give itself extra appendages or tentacles as needed. So this is a version of Wolverine who isn't in control as much, but does still have powers plus can also shapeshift. Sadly, this version of the character did perish, not because it was defeated per se, but because the head of its hive, the Poison Queen, was vanquished. That's how it works for the poisons. Your queen is vanquished, you're dead. Number eight, Wolverham. Although he might not seem that powerful, Wolverham of reality 73174 might actually end up being one of the most powerful? He is like an alternate version of both Spider-Ham, Peter Porker, and of Wolverine. Being that he's also kind of cartoony in Origins, it's likely that his powers are similar to that of both heroes, meaning that he has probably a crazy healing factor, his adamantium claws and skeleton, and can pull up all sorts of immensely powerful cartoon antics, with cartoon physics applying to his fights and his adventures. I don't know about you, but I think having cartoon physics in play makes you pretty powerful. Cartoon physics are wacky. Number seven, Jim Logan. Just like how there's a Spider-Man noir out there in the multiverse, there's also a Wolverine noir as well. From Earth 90,214, Jim Logan is an interesting case because unlike the other heroes in the Marvel noir universe, he seems to have two different personas. The first is a heavily scarred bootlegger known as Captain Jim, a serious drunk who was previously entangled with the con artist known as Jean Grey. He uses a rad looking set of portable claws which he wields with some deadly force. And then in his other incarnation within the noir reality, Logan is a private detective who's tasked with a mysterious and dangerous dangerous case that opens up the floodgates to his own dark past, who also seems to wield a set of claws for self-defense. Although, it's never really confirmed or denied if these two characters are in fact the same, or just two completely different people. Taking place in the Bowery of New York, Wolverine Noir takes Jim Logan on a dark, twisted adventure where he confronts demons of various kinds. There's also an air of mystery to Wolverine Noir, so we don't know who's who, but actions soon make facts very clear, especially when characters like Rose O'Hara and Victor Creed enter the fold. These merciless individuals take Jim Logan on a roller coaster ride that concludes with several of his friends' deaths and Logan having to deal with their losses. Check out Jim for yourself, starting with 2009's Wolverine Noir, number one. Number six, Dakin. The son that Wolverine never knew he had, Akihiro, better known as Dakin, had a pretty dark life right from the get-go. His mother, Itsu, was gunned down by the Winter Soldier in an attempt to draw out her husband, Wolverine, which is a pretty terrible thing on its own, but to make matters worse, she was pregnant with Dakin at the time as well. Wolverine didn't know this at all, but thankfully the baby inherited his healing factors and a lot of his other powers, which kept it alive long enough for it to be extracted from the mother's womb. Raised with a hatred of his own father from then on, who he believed was responsible for his mother's death, Dakin set out to get his vengeance. Cocky and reckless, Dakin has powers pretty much identical to that of his father. The only real difference is being the orientation of his claws, since one comes out of his wrist, and that he also has the ability to manipulate people to do his bidding via pheromones. Dakin's quest for revenge has seen him adopt the alias of Dark Wolverine as part of Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers and even in the Dark X-Men. All in all, Wolverine has fathered many, many bastards over the years, but the only one that could really give him a run for his money is Dakin himself. There's a whole lot to this character's story, so check him out for yourself, starting with his first appearance in 2006's Wolverine Origins, number 5. Number 5, Phoenix Force Wolverine. Man, if there is one thing that Marvel enjoys more than making Wolverine old, it is granting someone the power of the Phoenix Force. Now with that in mind, it was only a matter of time before we'd run into an old, Phoenix Force wielding Logan at the heart of the universe. Logan of Earth 14,412 mirrors his mainstream counterpart's history up to the point where King Loki completely wiped out humankind to make his brother Thor suffer. Logan ended up dying, but was chosen as the new host of the Phoenix Force, and he began traveling the universe, wiping out celestial bodies to aid the universe 
as it meant its slow death due to entropy. After encountering a future Loki, Logan was convinced to go back in time to prevent Loki from ever gathering the Infinity Stones, which he gladly did because it gave Logan the opportunity to see his long dead friends just one last time. After Wolverine returns to the future, he comes in contact with an old friend, Thor, and much to Thor's surprise, Logan attacks him pretty much right on sight. The two battle it out before eventually putting aside their differences to team up and take down a much bigger threat. Doom. Old Man Phoenix and Thor then face off against Doom, who reduced Logan to a nothing but a skeleton with the Spirit of Vengeance's Hellfire. But Logan resurrected and sacrificed himself to transfer the Phoenix Force into Mjolnir, which helped Thor defeat Doom once and for all. Give this Logan story a read for yourself, starting with his first appearance in 2017's Marvel Legacy, number one. Number four, Zombie Wolverine. <laughs> Do you see the smile? You know I'm smiling, right? It's because I get to talk about the zombie verse again, my big favorite. With a history identical to his 616 counterpart before the spread of the zombie virus, Wolverine ends up getting infected by the zombie virus when both Captain America and Hawkeye bite him. Now, one would probably expect Wolverine's healing factor to prevent the virus from affecting him, but it actually shorts out due to the virus overwhelming his system and he turns into a zombie. Now, one thing I love about this universe is that the zombie virus is depicted just a little bit differently than normal. It doesn't destroy its victim's mental faculties, all it really does is make them have this insatiable need for human flesh. So as a result, Wolverine is just as witty as he was when he was still living. In a battle with the Silver Surfer, the zombie Wolverine succeeds in defeating Galactus' Herald, and he and the other zombies devour the Surfer. This grants Wolverine the Power Cosmic, which he utilizes later to devour Galactus himself. The Power Cosmic doesn't last very long though, as he eventually loses it and reverts back to a normal zombie. Now given the zombie Wolverine's body count, it is fair to say that he's the best at what he does as well. Y'all know I love this storyline, so if you haven't taken my word for it and checked it out already, please do so, starting with 2007's Marvel Zombies, Dead Days, number one. Number three, Helverine. This unnamed demon began his journey for revenge on Wolverine by partnering with Roger, aka the husband, who he convinced to join the Red Right Hand. Roger and the members of the Red Right Hand sacrificed a man and a woman in order to invoke the demon once again. However, the demon appeared in a form of a snake and killed the two human sacrifices, stating that in order to get his revenge, it would cost them just a little bit more than that. Eventually, Logan was lured into a van by Mystique, where the leader of the Red Right Hand used another human sacrifice to have Helverine take over Wolverine's body, trapping actual Wolverine's soul in hell in the process. Helverine then went on a bit of a killing spree, torturing and killing some of Wolverine's closest friends and family. On top of that, he also attempted to manipulate many people, including X-23, into joining his armies. However, he didn't seem to succeed, as they were all way too smart to believe that he was actually Logan. It took a ton of force and a lot of the X-Men to take him down, but eventually Helverine was cast back to hell, after a projection of Nightcrawler and what appeared to be a vivid memory of Jean Grey as the White Phoenix burned the demon from his mind. Making his first appearance in 2010's Wolverine Volume 4 Number 1, why not check out this story for yourself? Number 2, Weapon X. In the Age of Apocalypse universe, the X-Men were formed under slightly different circumstances than we're used to, with one of the biggest differences being how Wolverine, aka Weapon X, joined the X-Men. Instead of being slowly integrated into the team by Professor X, Magneto instead recruited Wolverine onto his team and he tasked Jean Grey with stabilizing Wolverine's rage which led to a bit of a romance forming between the two as they worked together on the X-Men. Another pretty big difference in this universe was how Wolverine fought with Cyclops. Now their initial confrontation wasn't actually over Jean Grey like you might expect, it's actually because Cyclops was working for Apocalypse. When they encountered each other in Apocalypse Citadel, they battled it out and Wolverine lost a hand while Cyclops lost an eye. He then capped that stump with a metal plate, which he later revealed to house his retractable claws. Fast forward a little bit and we see Weapon X turn from a noble warrior into a ruthless Weapon Omega after he learned that he had been betrayed and that his love Jean Grey had not perished, but had instead been abducted by Sinister. Not able to cope with this information, Logan allowed himself to be manipulated in order to save the planet, and the result of these manipulations was Weapon Omega. With this newfound power to rival that of Apocalypse, the strain proves too much for Wolverine and his mind completely broke turning him into the heir of the monster he had once fought to slay. Check out 2006's Wolverine Origins number 5 onwards if you want to know more. And number 1, Old Man Logan. So come on, how could we not put Old Man Logan at the top of this list? I mean, come on, he is one of the best iterations of the character out there, and he has had to deal with some pretty dark things in his many, many years of life. So 50 years ago, supervillains from around the globe banded together and executed a devastating coordinated attack taking the Earth's heroes by surprise, resulting in not only the end of the Age of Heroes, but also the United States is revealed to now be carved into territories ruled with an iron fist by various supervillains. We discover that the hero once known as Wolverine is one of the few to survive, and that he is now taking up a life as a simple farmer with his wife and two children. 
vowing to never resort to violence again. However, finances start to become a bit of an issue for Logan, and eventually he decides to accompany a blind Hawkeye across the country to deliver the last of the Super Soldier Serum. All for the promise of a large payday. When they arrive at their destination, Hawkeye and Logan learn it's an ambush set up by the Red Skull. He attempts to take the serum from Logan, but despite his age, he manages to kill Red Skull using Cap's old shield. Logan then returns home shortly after, only to find that his family was slaughtered by the Hulk Gang. And in a massive rage, he murders the entire Hulk Gang leaving only Bruce Banner Jr. alive. Now I love this whole limited series, so why not check it out for yourself, starting with 2015's Old Man Logan, number one. Number 10, Rancor. Rancor is the descendant of Wolverine who hails from the Earth of 691. She first appeared in the original Guardians of the Galaxy series in issue number eight. When she was just a teenager, she battled her own father and defeated him by clawing out his heart. Yikes. She then took over the planet Haven and decided to take prisoner the human population of that planet, turning them into her servants against their will. She would cross paths and play villain to the original Guardians of the Galaxy team initially, but they would end up defeating her, this time around at least. Her powers are similar to Wolverine's, being that she is his descendant. As a ruler, she also has other warriors at hand who are willing to fight for her, although she herself is also a capable and skilled fighter. Number 9, Albert. Albert was an android created to destroy the real Wolverine by Donald Pierce. He came from a kind of wacky time in comics and also worked with LCD, another android who resembled a little girl. Like I said, it was an interesting and strange time. In the end, both LCD and Albert would go rogue, deciding not to complete their mission as they developed their own free will and thought and decided that eh, they didn't want to die. In killing Wolverine, they likely would have been forced to self-destruct, which they just were not into. Albert the android has powers very similar to Wolverine, though he doesn't self heal. But hey, he's an android, so he can be rebuilt or patched up in most cases if he's harmed. He also has the fighting prowess to almost match Wolverine of 616, almost, and also possesses a genius level intellect, supposedly. Number 8, Wolverine Earth 811. The Wolverine of Earth 811 is interesting as it has been implied that his powers, while similar to the version of Wolverine from Earth 616, could have actually just been a result of human evolution, with him potentially being a descendant of a small group of ancestors known as the Moon Clan, who hid when the Celestials first arrived at Earth, avoiding any of their genetic experimentation. Despite these potential origins, Wolverine was still considered a mutant when the Sentinels took over as he hails from the reality of Earth 811. And of course, Earth 811 is the reality of the Days of Future Past. He was the Wolverine to help Magneto rescue Scarlet Witch, but unfortunately she died during that attempt and Magneto ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Wolverine would go on to join the Resistance and become a leader among them. So he not only brings with him his own abilities, but influence over the Resistant forces located on his Earth in his reality. Number 7, Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan is still a badass who manages to get a lot done despite the fact that his healing factor sometimes struggles to keep up. In his old age, his healing factor is slowed down when we first get into Logan's future adventures in the post-apocalyptic wasteland that was once Earth. However, much more later down the line, his healing factor finally picks back up again. At this time, Logan no longer goes by the name Wolverine at all and is instead known as the Hooded Man. So this version of him is kind of weaker but also kind of the same. Either way, Old Man Logan also brings years of experience and wisdom to the table, which I think should be worth something extra when it comes to how powerful he is. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Wolverine lists, or more mutant lists in general, haha, I love writing mutant lists for you, please be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up and clicking subscribe. Do all the things, woo! Number 6, Diamond Patch. Diamond Patch is the version of Wolverine from Warp World, which of course was made by Gamora when using the Infinity Stones to fold the universe in half. He is the amalgamation of Emma Frost and Wolverine, making him a pretty deadly and stylish character. His claws, instead of being adamantium, are diamond, and Diamond Patch also has a sharp eye and mind for good business ventures as well, like Emma Frost. He also seems to be able to channel his telepathic powers using his claws as well. It was also implied that in the future, Diamond Patch may potentially potentially be destined to bond with the Phoenix Force. Ho ho! Number 5, Wolverina. Wolverina is the female version of Wolverine and cousin of Wolvie or Wolverine from the alternate Earth of 89923. She works as a waitress at her father's bar, Bud Sud, but is also a skilled fighter who was called in to replace Wolverine after he went missing. Wolverina also has leadership skills and could potentially make a good team leader if needed. More than that, while her powers are somewhat unspecified when it comes to 
what they are, or how powerful they can be considered. Wolverina also is a self aware comic book character, meaning that she knows she is in a comic book and can often use this knowledge to take charge of her own narrative and break the fourth wall with, reaching out to her readers. I think having that kind of power can be pretty potent in comics, which is why she makes the cut for our most powerful part two list. And she didn't do too bad, she's about halfway up, so. Pretty impressive. Number four, Weapon X. Weapon X comes to us from the Age of Apocalypse universe of Earth 295. Weapon X has powers similar to his Earth 616 counterpart, but his feral rages are more intense in comparison. And he initially requires Jean's assistance to calm those rages down, which was what brought the two together romantically. It would be in a fight with Cyclops when he made his way to try and save Jean Grey from Sinister that he'd lose his hand, while also taking one of Cyclops' eyes in exchange during the battle. A hand for an eye, an eye for a hand. That seems that seems pretty fair I guess. Weapon X would later go on, despite being maimed, to become even more powerful, possibly one of the most powerful alternate versions of the character, when he surprised everyone and ended up becoming Apocalypse's heir after his defeat and the return of the Celestials. During this time he was known as Weapon Omega, though his newfound power would only end up being temporary. Eventually he would have this power stripped from him by Jean and return one once more to being Weapon X. Also, I think I cut off this hand, but I think it's actually this hand I think that he loses. I'm trying to remember the art. I always want to mirror everything, so that's why. I don't even know if it'll be the same for you though, because this might be mirrored for you. I, I don't know. I don't know. How do you see it? Isn't camera, aren't cameras weird in the way that we see images? Isn't that all weird when you think about it? Anyways, the fact that we see images and we flip them with our eyes and it's all freaky. Number three, Earth 10005. This is the Wolverine that belongs to Fox's mutant verse, played by Hugh Jackman. In this reality, Wolverine was one of the strongest mutants around, being the only one that Kitty was able to send back in time in Days of Future Past, and the only one who was able to put a stop to Dark Phoenix when it had taken over Jean Grey, corrupting her in X Men Last Stand. Due to his healing factor, Logan was able to walk right up to Jean while everyone else was pretty much getting turned to dust around him. He pressed forward, struggling to reach her, and then used the awesome some power of his love for her to calm Dark Phoenix down enough for him to be able to kill her with his claws, bringing Jean back but also killing both her and the Phoenix. Really, really sad. That's some pretty powerful healing factor and some pretty powerful love factor as well. Number two, Governor General Howlett. The version of Wolverine from Earth 12025 is James Howlett. And he's not just a hero, but also holds the position of Governor General to the Queen of England for Canada. For those who might not be aware, the Governor General position in Canada acts as basically the, the go between for Canada and the Queen or the Crown. They act on behalf of the Crown, and a few other nations actually also have this position. Typically nations who were granted independence from the British, as opposed to having fought against the British to free themselves from British rule, have this position. James Howlett of Earth 12025 not only was known as Governor General, but he's also known for having an adamantine laced skeleton, which is actually different from adamantium, so if you thought I was saying that wrong. I'm not, it's a different thing. This instead is a mythical type of metal belonging to the gods. This grants James an extra layer of protection on both a mystical and godlike level, which means it's very hard to mess with James in any way. James also travels and adventures when he can with his romantic partner, Hercules, which means if you mess with him, you likely also have to fight Hercules as well. Both this number and number three actually both have the power of love. The power of love. Number one, Weapon Hex. Weapon Hex comes to us from Warp World, which was created by Gamora when she folded the universe in half. Doing so caused all the souls of that universe, of course, to merge together, as we talked about with Diamond Patch, creating combined beings such as Weapon Hex, who is a combination of both Laura Kinney's X23, aka Wolverine, and Scarlet Witch. She, as such, has the combined powers of both of these heroes, making her pretty OP, possibly even even more OP than Amalgam's Dark Claw, though she doesn't have quite as much plot armor most likely. Then again, with those two power sets, she wouldn't really need plot armor. 
At number 10 is X-24. In the dark and twisted multiverse of comic book adaptations, we've seen our fair share of alternate versions of our beloved characters. But in the film Logan, this sinister creation was engineered to be the ultimate unaliving machine, a nightmarish mirror image of Wolverine himself. Unlike the brooding and complex Logan we know, X-24 is a ruthless berserker devoid of any moral compass. See, he wasn't played by inner demons or a sense of duty. He was a pure force of destruction. And what made him even more terrifying was his relentless pursuit of Laura, or X-23, who shared Wolverine's blood. Every time X-24 appeared on screen, a wave of anxiety washed over myself, knowing that this unrelenting monster would stop at nothing to achieve its grisly objectives. If you're enjoying this video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Top 10 Nerd, and ringing that notification bell. I would really appreciate it. At number 9 is Zombieverse Wolverine. In the eerie expanse of the multiverse, we stumble upon a spine-chilling variant of Wolverine, who's a zombie, venture into Earth-Z, or Earth-2149, a nightmarish realm in which this gruesome iteration, Wolverine's fate, takes a sinister twist as he, along with a select other few heroes, feast upon the remains of the cosmic entity Galactus. But it doesn't stop there. The unholy banquet bestows upon zombie Wolverine the dreaded power cosmic. Damn, picture it. The relentless savagery of Wolverine as a zombie fueled with the limitless might of the cosmos. It's a ghastly unison that transforms Logan into a nightmarish force, a walking apocalypse with claws and a cosmic energy at his disposal. This incarnation of Wolverine sends shivers down the spine, reminding us that within the multiverse, terror knows no bounds. At number eight is the Lord of the Vampires. This spine-chilling incarnation of Logan emerged from the pages of the What If series, specifically in Volume 2, Issue 24. Here, a fateful turn of events sees Storm choosing to stay by Dracula's side during the X-Men's clash with the infamous Vampire Lord. The consequences were world-altering, as Wolverine and his fellow heroes fell victim to capture and transformation. Yet the adamantium-laced warrior's indomitable will too proved way too powerful for Dracula's control. In a gruesome twist, Wolverine overcame the Vampire Empire Lord seizing the throne and becoming the new Lord of the Vampires. Picture Wolverine with fangs ruling over legions of bloodsuckers and capable of enslaving anyone with a single bite. It's a nightmarish blend of clawed ferocity and immoral bloodlust that would haunt even the most fearless of souls. Number 7, Jimmy Hudson. Jimmy is the son of Wolverine from the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610. Though Jimmy wouldn't know he was Wolverine's son until his mutant powers manifested. His powers are similar to his dad's, but Jimmy is also bonded to one of the poisons, a kind of symbiotic alien creature that typically takes over their hosts. However, after their leader died, Jimmy found a way to control his poison. While bonded to his poison, Jimmy also has spider-like abilities and can shapeshift, turning his claws into tensile, goo-like tendrils or extremely elongated spikes. Whatever he prefers for the day. Number 6, X24. X24 was a clone of Logan made to defeat the old man version of him and recapture the clones who had escaped. He was powerful enough to take on both old man Logan and Laura Kinney at the same time. And Logan pretty much dies trying to fight him in the end, and X24 is even then only killed after X23 is forced to shoot him with an adamantium bullet that Wolverine was actually saving for himself to end his own life. X24 is one tough dude in this movie. He is a version of Logan whose rage is more tapped into and unleashed. What's more, he was engineered to be comparable to Logan in terms of his power level, but in peak physical condition. Considered to be like Wolverine, but as he was in his prime. Number 5, Gorgon. I always forget that Gorgon was also Wolverine, but him being one of Norman Osborn's dark recruits and carrying the mantle would definitely make him one of the most powerful alternate versions of Wolverine around. Because Gorgon is a pretty powerful and deadly guy. Even if, as we learned during the other world tournament in Ten of Swords, he isn't immune to the seduction of rock sirens. Gorgon is a masterful fighter and a powerful mutant who also has the ability to turn his opponents to stone, hence his name. Gorgon. He is a deadly force to be reckoned with, and I personally feel bad for all of the folks who have to challenge him whenever he's working security for the mutants of Krakoa. A lot of those people just are getting maimed left, right, and center. Ugh. 
Number 4 Dokken Dokken or Akihiro is a deadly member of the Wolverine family, who spent his time as Wolverine when he was on the Dark Avengers. It was during this time that Dokken attempted to take the Muramasa blade for himself, to boost his power. He planned on having it bonded to his skeleton and coating his claws in it, and he wanted it so he could basically go kill Romulus. Remember Romulus everyone? Whatever happened with that? He was successful in bonding the Muramasa blade to his claws, but didn't get to hold on to that power permanently. He would go on to battle and defeat both Scar and the Punisher, in fact seemingly killing Frank Castle, who would then go on to become Franken Castle for a time. One of Dawkins most powerful abilities is his pheromone control, which can allow him to alter his opponents mood. This is actually how he won against Scar using pheromones to calm Scar down, which caused him to then transform and transform in a way where he was just more chill. Number 3 Laura Kinney Despite not even being an exact clone of Logan, X-23 is still one of the most powerful versions of Wolverine around out there. She became Wolverine in the all new Wolverine series. Even today it's more the mantle and look that Laura is known for, with both her and Logan currently using the same name, Wolverine, on Krakoa. So there are two Wolverines technically within the same continuity now. More recently Wolverine was chosen to go on a mission in inside the vault, along with Darwin and the resurrected Sink. The three were brought in to do so because of their extraordinary abilities and the fact that Sink could in effect use both of their powers himself. As we saw in issues 18 and 19 of the 2019 X-Men series, time moves differently in the vault. And in the end, the mission ended up taking, for them, hundreds of years before they actually managed to complete it and get out. But despite aging, Laura did not slow down. Even in the old woman Laura future, where her cells were beginning to break down due to her being created originally from genetic engineering, Laura still proved to be a badass, using her last bit of time alive to defeat Doom and free the people of Latveria. Basically all around, X-23 is just like the best. She's so cool. Number 2 Dark Claw Dark Claw is a combination of Marvel's Wolverine and DC's Batman, hailing from the Amalgam Comics universe. So yeah, you know he's OP. He's not only got a powerful regenerative healing factor, but is a master fighter, martial artist, and detective who also happens to have super enhanced senses. Imagine a master detective who is also a master tracker. There is no crime or mystery that he could not solve. Dark Claw is also known for being hyper intelligent besides, so he's basically got the whole package. He's also super wealthy in this reality as well, so he's got money to back up his vigilante antics, helping him to acquire high level tech and giving him access to various different gadgets, as well as his own claw copter, which this character has in place of a Batmobile. If you're both Wolverine and Batman, does that mean you just have like unlimited plot armor? Because I feel like both of those characters can never die just because they're so popular, so I feel like Dark Claw would be pretty unstoppable. Number 1 Old Man Phoenix Obviously one of the most powerful versions of Wolverine around has to be the one from the alternate future of King Thor, Earth 14412. Here Wolverine goes on to become the Phoenix after seemingly dying along with everyone else on Earth at the hands of Loki. The Phoenix however chose him and because of that he lived again and was given an unimaginable amount of cosmic power. Logan mostly used this power to fend off villains including Ultron and Loki and to keep the space stone out of Loki's hands. Many years later as Old Man Phoenix, he would team up with King Thor to protect the Earth from Doctor Doom, after it was given new life again. Doom in this reality was also immensely powerful, and although Logan could not be killed in battle, he chose to sacrifice himself to give Thor the power to defeat Doom, imbuing his hammer Mjolnir with the Phoenix Force. However, even after seemingly giving up his life here, he would still somehow end up being resurrected. Because Phoenix. Coming in at number 10 is Dark Claw. So, what happens if you take Logan Howlett and Bruce Wayne and just mash them up together? You subtract Robbins, add some Canada, carry the two, and you'll find you get Logan Wayne. This awesome character is from the Amalgam Universe of Earth 9602. Obviously, Bruce Wayne has no actual powers of his own unless you count his undeniable skill. So, most of the abilities belonging to Logan Wayne come from his Wolverine half. A massively powerful regenerative healing factor, slowed aging, superhuman senses plus his healing factor and adamantium skeleton allow him to have a degree of super strength. But thanks to his Wayne half of things, Dark Claw is a master detective and master of martial arts, stealth, acrobatics, and intimidation. After he witnessed the passing of his parents, Logan went to live with his uncle up in Alberta, Canada, who then also lost his life to poachers. So yes, this is still as dark as both Bruce and Logan's backstories. He then went to kick it with some nuns and then joined up with the Canadian Air Force. Now, after this, at some
some point, he joined the Weapon X program and learned of his mutation and gained his claws alongside his incredibly dangerous rival, Creed H. Quinn, who would become a saber-toothed Joker hybrid named Hyena. Logan Wayne would go back to New Gotham City, where he decided to avenge his parents and uncle's deaths by donning the costume and name of Dark Claw. Number 9. Sideburns When Galactica, the daughter of Galactus, is looking for her next meal in issue 1 of her self-titled comic, she finds Earth, a lovely little morsel of a planet teeming with scrumptious life. But while looking at her dinner, she happens to notice Wolverine, a mutant who can seemingly regenerate from anything. I mean, there's also Deadpool, but whatever. Realizing his mutant regenerative abilities, she formulates an idea of using a bit of his harvested DNA with a bit of celestial power to create Sideburns, the regenerating planet. A planet-sized Wolverine that would grow back after each meal, giving the world devourer billions and billions of years of meals. Unfortunately, she just as quickly realizes that a planet made up of Canadian mutant DNA like this, prone to drinking beer over anything else, and with predilection to being feral, would be highly unstable. Unfortunate because I'd love to see this guy floating around through the galaxy. Number 8. House of M. Wolverine Now to be clear, technically this version of Wolverine is just regular old 616 Wolverine, since unlike other characters in this Scarlet Witch created reality, Wolverine retains all of his old memories, which gives him a distinct advantage in this world. But outside of his story serving memories, before he regains those memories, this Wolverine was a member of Magneto's Red Guard, which saw him have additional training as a shield operative, adding extra skill to a character who is hard to even scratch on a villain's best day. Also, in this reality, Logan has himself a little relationship with Mystique, unlike his alternates, who seem to always be pining after Jean Grey. Is this an advantage over regular Wolverine? Uh, depends on your taste. At number 7 is Cancerverse Wolverine. Cancerverse Wolverine is a denizen of Earth 10011, remains a shadowy figure in the Marvel Universe. In this eerie reality, known as the Cancerverse, the Grim Reaper has been utterly obliterated, and in the absence of the unalive, paradoxically, it gave birth to a cosmic nightmare. Cancerverse Wolverine's appearance alone is enough to send shivers down your spine. In a world where mortality is non-existent, life spirals into a grotesque spectacle, a chilling reflection of the importance of balance in the universe. Because in this twisted realm, even a hero like Wolverine becomes a harbinger of terror, a reminder that the natural order of things, no matter how unsettling, always has its rightful place. At number 6 is Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan is a haunting iteration of Wolverine, emerging from Earth 807128. In this chilling reality, the claws of tragedy run deep. See, Logan was once a hero who now carries the crushing weight of guilt upon his adamantium laced shoulders. Mysterio's sinister dissipation led him down a path of unwitting youth euthanization, annihilating his fellow X-Men. Time catapults us into a future where Logan has abandoned his iconic alias, opting simply for his first name to escape the specter of his past. But Destiny refuses to release his grip. Logan attempts to evade heroics, settling into a family life, yet peril relentlessly pursues him. When the ruthless Hulk gang eliminates his loved ones over the late protection money, Logan's dormant savagery ignites. The descent into vengeance becomes an inescapable plunge, culminating in a gory reckoning that liberates his world from the clutches of the deranged Pappy Banner and his nightmarish clan. In the desolate landscape of Old Man Logan's reality, even heroes succumb to darkness, making it one of the most spine-tingling alternate Wolverines in the multiverse. And at number 5, my personal favorite is Old Man Venom. Enter the Venomverse, where unimaginable transformations await. In this universe, we get to see Old Man Logan devoured by a venom-infested T-Rex. But here's the twist. The symbiote decides that Logan is a superior host and merges with him. The result is Venom Wolverine, or as I like to call him, Old Man Venom. A character oozing with insanity, ethics thrown out the window, and an utter disregard for consequences. Sure, he might have a laundry list of symbiote vulnerabilities, making him marginally less formidable than your typical regenerating Logan, but the sheer terror he instills is undeniable. Venom Wolverine is a monstrous fusion of two iconic characters, delving into a spying-tingling combination of ferocity and chaos. Next time you delve into alternate realities, keep an eye out for this hair-raising incarnation of Wolverine. At number 4 is Wolverine Noir. In the shadowy realms of this alternate universe, we stumble upon Jim Logan, a character shrouded 
shrouded in mystery and intrigue. This noir iteration of Wolverine takes us on a journey through the Marvel Noirverse, offering a distinctive twist on the iconic mutant. In this iteration, Logan isn't a berserker on the battlefield, but a detective navigating the murky waters of crime. It's a fitting role for a man with heightened senses and a knack for tracking. Wolverine Noir paints a gritty picture of reminiscent of classic noir films, amplifying the eerie ambience that defines this universe. This version delves into Wolverine's past, mirroring the harrowing narrative from his origin series. Raised by a feverly religious father, Jim's childhood is the haunting tale of sermons and strife, shaping his path into the detective he becomes. So while we've seen Logan in countless forms, Jim Logan's chilling incarnation stands out as one of the most intriguing and unsettling alternate versions of this iconic character. At number three is Phoenix Wolverine. In the realm of eerie alternate Wolverines, the incarnation known as Phoenix Logan takes a chilling spot on our list. Picture a grim future where Thor ascends to the all-father status and Loki, the ever-benevolent trickster, decimates humanity just to torment his brother. In this apocalyptic landscape, Wolverine, after his own demise, becomes a new vessel for the awe-inspiring Phoenix Force. With this cosmic power coursing through his adamantium-laced veins, Wolverine exhibits an array of mind-bending abilities, even at one point going as far as to save Loki from the formidable Celestials. However, the terror takes on a different twist when a future iteration of Doctor Doom crosses this Wolverine's path, obliterating him. Yet thanks to the Phoenix Force, his demise is merely a minor setback. To secure Doctor Doom's defeat, Logan willingly sacrifices himself, channeling his power through Thor's mighty Mjolnir in the relentless battle. At number two is Akihiro. Akihiro, also known as Dakin or Fang, is a chilling alternate version of Wolverine. During the Dark Reign storyline when Norman Osborn took control of the comics, Dakin emerges as a sinister counterpart. See, Osborn had formed Hammer and the Dark Avengers, a team comprised of rebranded villains as Avengers replacements. While Osborn attempted to recruit original Avengers, most of them declined. Dakin, however, joined as Dark Wolverine. Akihiro might not currently be villainous, but during that time, he was a bona fide baddie. What makes him terrifying in the series is his lack of a moral code, even compared to his father, who isn't known for his strength. Dakin, like Wolverine is a highly skilled fighter and assassin groomed from childhood to be a lethal weapon for Romulus against Logan. This alternate version of Wolverine is a dark reflection of the iconic hero. And at number one is Dark Claw. Dark Claw, a fusion of Marvel's Wolverine and DC's Batman from the Amalgam Universe, is undeniably one of the scariest alternate versions of Wolverine. Imagine the brooding intensity of Batman mixed with the raw, animalistic ferocity of Wolverine. It's a chilling combination, and Dark Claw inherits Bruce Wayne's wealth and tragic backstory, ensuring that he's a complex and deeply haunted character. But what truly sets him apart is his adamantium-coated skeleton and healing factor borrowed from Wolverine, obviously. This mending of two iconic Fear-inducing heroes creates a formidable force. Dark Claw embodies the fear of the night, blending the relentless pursuit of justice with the untamed power of Wolverine's regenerative abilities and his claws. Crossing paths with Logan Wayne would send shivers down anyone's spine. Kicking off the list at number 10, Dark Claw. Coming from the Amalgam Universe, where DC and Marvel combine powers figuratively and literally, we get a Wolverine-Batman double whammy. First appearing in Legends of the Dark Claw issue 1 back in 1996, at just age 5, young Logan Wayne witnessed the death of his parents, so now we have that Batman origin right off the bat to lay the foundation. Good stuff, always promising. And then Logan Wayne was sent to live with his uncle in Canada. But after poachers ambushed his home, we have even more family members biting the bullet. So far, so sad. Okay, so Logan Wayne enlisted then in the Royal Canadian Air Force and soon after the Weapon X program. This is all starting to sound a bit familiar, I bet. That's when the Wolverine origin comes in. Logan Wayne got the adamantium treatment, but it was a failure. In a way, kind of. Because Logan wasn't this mindless brute like he was in the comics. See, now he kept his sanity. So now we're starting to get more of a positive vibe, which is good for a good start of this list. Afterwards, he was a free man, so he studied criminology, forensics, gymnastics, martial arts, anything he could get his hands on, including the 127 major styles of combat. That mixed with the claws, Logan Wayne is somebody I'd never want to cross paths with, either as Batman or just Wolverine. Either way, I'm like, no, you guys are both gonna kill me. And before we continue on with this list, if you wanna go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, support our man Wolverine, he is Canadian, we are Canadian, only makes sense, really hit those thumbs up, you guys are the best, let's get back to the list. Number nine, Wild Thing. For this one, we go over to the MC2 universe where Elektra married Wolverine and soon after came a child, of course. That daughter was named Rena Logan, and if that name doesn't ring a bell, she's also called Wild Thing. 
Marvel's MC2 imprint quickly gained momentum after What If, issue 105, which introduced us to a universe full of other super kids. Wild Thing's powers are very similar to her father's, obviously. I mean, even just by looking at her, you could probably make a guess who she's an offspring of. All that aggression, you're like, okay, it's definitely Wolverine. She also possesses the power of regenerative healing and super strength, but what makes her stand out really is the psychic claws. Instead of adamantium claws, she has minor psionic abilities that allow her to manifest her own claws, but if she focuses hard enough, if she really thinks she can have claws, real life claws like her father, and dish out physical damage too. Mental, physical, she's got you beat in both realms. Number eight, Hydra Wolverine. Hearing Cap say Hail Hydra in Endgame was a wild moment to witness in theaters. Steve using future knowledge to save the day instead of kicking everybody's ass in the elevator, whilst tipping his hat to comic book fans, it was a nice moment, beautifully written in. In Exiles issue 92, we get to see Logan turn sides briefly as well. In this reality, Wolverine is a Hydra agent and the Invisible Woman is Madame Hydra. And to make things even more strange, they're both lovers. Yeah, this, this odd couple here alongside Slay Master left their reality after fighting the Exiles and they tried to conquer the multiverse. Hydra Wolvi wasn't around too long for he was actually brutally taken out by the cat with his own claws in New Exiles issue 12. Number seven, Vampire Wolverine. In what if number 24, thanks to his healing factor, Wolverine is actually immune to being turned into a vampire from just a regular old bite, which allows him to be the best one suited to bring down the threat of vampires themselves. But when he finally takes down Dracula, he actually decides to have a little snack on the dead vampire, which does turn the mutant into not just a vampire, but the new vampire king. The fact that Vampire Wolverine is a vampire means that his strength and speed are enhanced to vampiric levels. On top of that, he has an evil personality that is fueled by the character's desire to drain the blood of the living. Now couple that with his already somewhat feral personality, his healing factor, adamantium skeleton, and the vampire trait of immortality, and he is very dangerous compared to the usual Wolverine. Number six, Ultimate Wolverine. I'm gonna be honest, this version of Wolverine is a bit alarming in terms of his morals and preferences and just his behavior in general is just a bit less heroic than his 616 counterpart. But despite that, it is hard not to admit that he is quite the powerful character. His healing factor is a bit different than his prime version and is called a survival factor. That means he can survive being torn in half, departed from his head, and even blown up by a nuclear explosion. He can also detect lies and still has an adamantium skeleton. He was trained by Weapon X as an emotionless assassin, but when the Brotherhood hired him to take out Xavier, he proves he is more than just muscle, overcoming his brainwashing and joining the X-Men. Although it may have only been just because he fell in love with the teenage Jean Grey when he was like 30 years old, which is a little uncomfortable. Number five, Days of Future Past. Wolverine in the Days of Future Past storyline comes from a future world that has become apocalyptic because of the Sentinels, which basically eradicated mutants by the thousands and ended up enslaving the planet, both mutant and humankind alike. Now Wolverine, who in this future is older and by extension more experienced, is a more powerful version of his 616 counterpart. He still has all the powers of the regular Wolverine, but he just works a lot smarter. Unfortunately, he still ends up passing when a sentinel destroys him, leaving only his adamantium skeleton behind. But thanks to comics being comics, this version is revived and appears again much later on in Earth X, standing in for this Earth's Wolverine, who had finally married and settled down with Jean Grey, which I, I think makes him more powerful, but he also really settled, grew a rather large gut, and seems to have completely distanced himself from his former self. Jean also abandons her former life and is now an out of shape housewife chasing after their kids and resenting her choice to marry Logan. So, yes, Days of Future Past Logan was needed here for sure. Number four, Old Man Logan. In the alternate universe where we are introduced to Old Man Logan and Old Man Hawkeye, everything is in shambles. It's an apocalyptic wasteland, and all because the villains, under the leadership of the Red Skull, had coordinated a massive attack on the world's superheroes, leaving only a very, very few alive. Logan himself was tricked into wiping out every single member of the X-Men, and while that is tragic, I do have to say, that's incredibly impressive. Like. Damn. Impressive or not, it drove Logan mad with grief and he vowed to become a pacifist. He retired to a quiet farming family life, letting the world go to hell around him, but we need a story so that can't fly. Eventually, being short on money and needing to help his family, he joins Hawkeye on an adventure across America to deliver a briefcase of super soldier serum. After he goes on this grand adventure, defeats the Red Skull, and returns home, the Hulk gang has decimated his family. This is when he finally pops his claws for the 
first time since the story began and ooh, it's satisfying. He wipes out the entire gang and eviscerates the Hulk himself and then eventually finds his way to the main Marvel Universe. Another version of him even gets the powers of Venom as well. So cool. Number three, Weapon Omega. After the mutant legion went back in time and accidentally took the life of his pops, Xavier, Apocalypse came out of hibernation 10 years too early and took over control of the United States. Enter the Age of Apocalypse storyline. The Logan of Age of Apocalypse is extremely ferocious and he goes by the name Weapon X. He has only one hand after having it blasted off by Cyclops, but his claws still pop through the nub, which is kind of alarming. He and Jean Grey set off apart from the X-Men to save mutants and stop Apocalypse, but Weapon X eventually becomes the new Apocalypse, gaining his celestial and mutant powers to try and stop aliens from destroying the population of Earth. Yes, it's nuts, but I suggest you check out the story because it's super cool. Number two, General James Howlett. In the second volume of Extreme X-Men, joining a team of multi-dimensional mutants that hunt down evil Xaviers across many dimensions is a much different version of Wolverine. Hailing from the reality of Earth 12025, this version of our feral mutant is the Governor General of the Dominion of Canada and Viceroy of Her Majesty's Expedition to Shangri-La. He is like a version of Wolverine who is also mixed with President Theodore Roosevelt but still Canadian. General James Howlett is an adventurer and hero alongside his partner and lover, the demigod Hercules, or Heracles if you prefer and want to get smarmy in the comments. These two shared a love that was built after years and years of working together and their bond was so strong that Herc gave James a super cool upgrade in the form of a skeleton made of adamantine, which is a godly golden metal even stronger than adamantium, making Wolverine completely indestructible and immune to telepathic attacks. Unfortunately, due to the god on mortal nature of the relationship, the Greek gods banish the pair to Tartarus where they fight hordes and hordes of lost and damned souls for like four years. His penchant for big booms and affinity for political service make him a fun take on this character and the beard? Oh, it's classic. And in at number one is Phoenix Logan. The Phoenix Force embodies life in the Marvel Universe. It is incredibly powerful and when it chooses a host, that being becomes a force to be reckoned with. Which is funny how it always seems to happen to characters who are already pretty damn unstoppable by themselves. Old Man Phoenix is an alternate reality version of Wolverine from Earth 14112, which features a story that is actually revolved around Old King Thor. Now Wolverine's past resembles his Earth 616 counterpart, but but it's a little different because after Loki destroyed everyone on Earth, including Wolverine, the Phoenix Force chose Wolverine as its avatar, resurrected him, and granted him its powers. So what we have here is Wolverine's regenerative healing factor, retractable adamantium claws, and enhanced senses combined with the Phoenix's psionic powers, cosmic pyrokinesis, and flight. These factors come together to make him one of the most powerful entities in his universe, even more powerful than old King Thor himself. Thank you.